Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of uh, 3D Boxing Podcast. Um, happy uh, Memorial Day uh, as we celebrate that this weekend. Um, and if you're not familiar, in America, a Memorial Day is a day that we celebrate all of the fallen veterans who we've lost um, in all our wars, uh, in all our uh, military co- conflicts. Um, so, uh honor to them a shout out to all of them um and god bless all of them and god bless all of our veterans who are who are currently uh serving overseas and and those who have uh, returned home safely and i, w- I want to get into that i want to take today uh well this weekend memorial uh day weekend to to celebrate a veteran a hero who did return home um thank god jamel herring uh who served um in the middle east in in the marines um the episode of, for today is, is about Jamel Herring as, as boxing's most improved fighter. Uh, in, in other sports, like in basketball, the uh, in the NBA, the most improved player was pa, uh, Pascal Siakam. In the NFL, it was Ryan Tannehill, the Tennessee Titans. Uh, but that's not really something we talk about too much um, in boxing. We don't really give that award away when we do our year-end awards. Uh, but if, if we would have, um, I, I think the obvious name is Jamel Herring. Um, Herring is a guy that he went to the Olympics, lost in the first round. It looked like, okay, this was a great story. You know, he was already old. I think he was 26 when he was in the Olympics. He, he, he uh, qualified from, you know, out, out of the Marines. He looked at him, okay, the guy's fundamentally good. You know, he's pretty high-level basic. You know, there's not a lot of gears to him. You know, he'll beat, you know, C-level fighters, but when he steps up, I, I just don't know if there's a whole lot to him. You know, and, and that looked to be the case when he lost to Shapikov, Um and then he lost to Ladarius Miller. You know, when he lost to Shapikov, he, he would have won that fight. He likely would have got a, a title shot. Then he lost that fight. Um, then, you know, he rebuilt, he put a couple wins together, and then he lost to Ladarius Miller. And that basically looked like the end of him ever getting a title shot. Um, he signed with top rank. He got in position. He fought Ito, and he won the WBO 130 pound. Now, moving down to 130 pounds, was probably the best decision he can make. He's making the weight. Uh, he's really tall. He's 5'10", so he's tall for the weight class. Um, but he looks tremendous there. Uh, I, I think that had a lot to do with it, as did teaming up with Bomac. Um, Bomac obviously trained Crawford, uh, has taken Crawford to pound for pound. I think Crawford's got the best skills in the sport. Um, and now he's d- replicating that, you know, with, with Jamel Herring. Uh, J- Jamel Herring went from a guy that we – Oh, was not going to win a world title. I, I'll be honest. I picked him to lose to Ito, and I picked for him to lose to Lamont Roach. He won both those fights. So uh, he's come a long way, and he looks more confident in the ring. He looks more composed. He looks in control, and maybe that has to do with him being the bigger guy in the ring because he's 5'10". He's tall. He's big and strong for the weight class. Um, not too many guys are, are going to be his, his size, you know. So he has the size of it. Maybe that's part of the confidence. Maybe he's fighting the right weight class. Now maybe 135 was the wrong weight class for him. He's undefeated at 130. And look, he's going to be a, a – with his skill and his ability and his ring IQ, he's going to be trouble for anyone in this weight class. And all the fights are there for him. You know, if you go through the division, uh, Miguel Burchell is probably the best 130-pounder. You know, with, with There's Tank and Leo, who are supposedly fighting at 130. Let, let's see if that fight actually comes up at 130. But that division's got Burchelt, top-ranked guy. It's got Joseph uh, Diaz, a Golden Boy guy. He just beat a Golden Boy guy in Lamont Roach. You know, would Oscar want to get some revenge and throw Diaz at him? That'd be a great fight. What about a Tevin Farmer fight for uh, for Jamel Harry? Yeah, that, that New York-Philly thing, um, that would be a great fight. Then there's Valdez which would be another top-ranked guy. And, and the fight it looks like we're going to get first is the Frampton fight, right, which he go over there, 
make a lot of money to beat up Frampton. It's name, it's name value. It's it's a name that you can add to your resume. It's a, it's a good scalp to have on your on, on your on your wall above your fireplace. Uh, look, Carl Frampton's probably going to the Boxing Hall of Fame, and Jamel Heron can pick a win over him. Um, and after that, look, none of those guys, Burchell, Diaz, Farmer, Valdez, none of those guys can definitely beat him. He can outbox every one of those guys. The Farmer fight would be interesting. Um, but because they're both kind of counter punchers, but if you, if you go back to the Roach fight, where Roach is a counter puncher, Herring dominated the fight. You know, Herring came forward and he landed first. He consistently landed first. He's a great body puncher. Um, I would pick Herring to win that fight. You know, the only I may pick him to win all these fights at one thirty. That's how that's how far he's progressed. He's come really far in in a really short time. Uh, the pride of Gordon Heights, Long Island, New York. A, a guy that when he came up, you know, we all love the story. Great guy, wished him the best. You know, never thought he'd really accomplish. I never thought he'd win a world title, especially after he lost to Darius Miller. I, I thought he was basically done. Um, but I, I, I want to get into that. Um, like I said, we we thought his career was basically over. Not that his career was over, but his chance of winning a world title was was more or less over. But that's just not the case. Uh, he came, he's come back. He's retooled. He's revamped. There's a lot of things to really like about Herring. Um, and I, I want to get into you know exactly why we're, we're saying he's the most improved fighter in boxing in the world because he is. If, if you go back to his fights, the uh, his 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 last loss. Against Ladarius Miller, which was right up in the lead up to the Floyd Mayweather fight, the Floyd Mayweather um, with uh, Conor McGregor, that 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 fiasco. This was, I think, a day or two, or maybe yeah, it was a day or two before that. Um, he needed to take control more, right? Like he 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 was fighting another pure boxer. And in Ladarius Miller. And Ladarius Miller was co consistently throwing first. He was throwing first and he was in a position where he was counter he was countering. He was chasing him around the, the ring. He, and he was doing some good work in spots, right? He landed some good body shots, but then he went away from it. Um he was just he wasn't letting his hands go. He wasn't firing off enough shots. He wasn't firing off enough body shots. Ladarius Miller was consistently throwing first. I don't know who the faster, who had the faster hands, but Ladarius Miller was was throwing first and landing first. Um, and even when uh, Herring was coming forward and and, and making um, uh, Ladarius Miller go backwards, he still wasn't throwing. Like he was coming forward, coming forward. But Miller was throwing first. Miller was throwing first. Now you go back to his most recent fight, fighting another counter puncher in Lamont Roach, and it was a night and day difference. You see. You see uh, Herring throwing first. You see Herring doubling up the jab, keeping uh, Roach at bay, keeping him at bay, and then going down to the body. If you go early, he threw the left hand to the body. Um, you know, he usually uh, throws a right hook to the body. But he's going with a, with a left hand to the body. So he's going to the body with, with both hands, jabbing him at range, keeping him at range, and just firing that jab. And that's what he needs to do. And that's, what, that's been the, the, the rapid improvement. Whatever Bo Mack has been doing with camp, he just looks much more confident, much more in control. Like there's much more of a game plan, um, and he's executing that right. It's it's not just him looking to score more punches. Look, he's not a power puncher. He's not going to win at the highest levels by scoring a bunch of knockouts. You know, if he fights Burchell, he's not going to knock Burchell down. If he fights Jojo Diaz, he's not going to knock Jojo Diaz out. He's going to have to win these fights on points. And now it seems like Bomac has formulated a style where he can he can do that, where he's not just countering, where he's not just looking to slip and, and land a left hand, slip and land a jab. He is in control of the fight. He's controlling the action. Now, he can still fight going backwards. He's a slick guy. He's got a lot of skills. He's a pretty good athlete. He can still fight going backwards, but that's not all he's doing. He comes forward and he controls the action now. The, you know, the question would be, would, would if if he look, I think think we all agree he beats Frampton at this point. I mean, maybe it's tough. Frampton's a, a savvy pro, but I think we all pick Herring. Looking past that, 
you're going to have a couple of fights, right? You're going to have Burchell, which would be a fun fight. You could have a Tevin Farmer fight or a Jojo Diaz fight. But the other fight I, I want to look at, once boxing returns and there's crowds and venues, Shakur Stevenson is fighting at 130. Shakur Stevenson is huge for 126. He's fighting his next fight, a non-title fight. He's kind of tuned up fight at 130. How great would that fight be? Shakur Stevenson, Newark, New Jersey, right across the bridge. Um, and Jamel Herring from Long Island, New York, from Gordon Heights, fighting at Madison Square Garden. That's as good as it gets, right? That that would pack out that that would pack out the garden. You'd have basically two hometown fighters fighting in the garden, and it'd be a master's, you know, a master class of boxing skill. Um, I think that's the fight that he should be aiming for. You know, obviously Lomachenko is, is the name. I don't know if he wants to go back up to 135. He looks in control. He looks ready. To, you know, he looks like he can make 130. He looks big and strong for the size. It looks like 130 is his best weight class. So I don't know if he wants, you know, if that's the goal. If Lomachenko was willing to come down, back down to 135, that would be one thing. But if, if Lomachenko's off, you want to fight Shakur Stevenson. You'll be the bigger guy in the ring. You'll have a reach advantage and a height advantage on Shakur. And he's not used to giving that up. I'm not saying he can win these fights, but he's going to be competitive in all of them. That's how far he's come with Bomac. Look, I can't tell you that Shakur is going to be able to fight going backwards the whole time. Time is jab. Come over his jab. He's a tricky southpaw with a lot of skills and height. At 5'10", at 130 pounds southpaw, that is, that's a tough matchup for anyone. And now he's using that reach and he's using that skill. And, he, you know, he's, he's sitting down on his punches more. He's firing off his punches. Again, he's still not going to be a knockout artist, but he's got – that respectable power where you can, where he, he would keep Burchell off of him, right? Like Burchell could just walk in the front door and start pounding away on him. Uh, Herring would keep him off of him. You know, he's not going to knock him out. He's not going to knock Jojo Diaz out. Uh, but these are all good fights and fights that Herring could win. And it's, it's, it's a testament, you know, you know he's got a lot of heart. He's a U.S. Marine. Uh, but this is a testament to his work ethic. And, like, he's 33 now, so I, or 34, I believe. I guess you can teach an old dog new trick because Bo Mac's done a heck of a job. Uh, as much credit as I give to Herring, I also give that same credit to, to Bo Mac. I, I think a lot of fighters um, should look at him, especially slick boxers and movers. Like they should look at Bo Mac and what he's done with Herring um, and say, hey, I want to get with this guy. He, he's got the right formula here because, look, we when he lost to Ladon, we all kind of. He's a heck of a nice guy. He's got a great story. Wish the best. Hope he succeeds. Hope he becomes a world champion. But realistically, that's not going to happen. And it did. And not only did he, he could be a unified champ, he could beat France and then go on and be, uh, fight for Chell or someone like that. He would pick apart Valdez. Um, I, I think he would have a field day with somebody as defensively flawed as Valdez. He's big and strong for the size. Valdez comes up. He, he, you know, Herring's going to be the stronger guy in the ring. Valdez is going to be a bit, if Burchell can't walk him down, but you can't, Valdez has no chance. I mean, these are fights he can win. You know, when this is all said and done and we get through this division, you know, if we ever get a, a undisputed champ at 130, it could be Jamel Herring. And again, at the Olympics, you know, he, he somehow qualified for the team when he wasn't expected to, you know, he, he overcame those odds, got on the team. He overcame the odds to become a world champ. This might be the guy that we all kind of overlook. Who ends up being the best guy in the weight class? Uh, let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Uh, from Texas to the world, thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.